I have a mega favorite number. It is 43 quintillion, 252 quadrillion, 3 trillion, 274 billion, 489 million, 856 thousand. That was a mouthful. Well, I do have another one. It's 3 million, 674 thousand, 160. But why is that? Before I go on, I would like to say that this video is kind of a response, I guess, to mega favorite numbers. Basically, a video in where you can express yourself showing your favorite number over a million. So, why exactly is 43 quintillion that? Why exactly is that my mega favorite number? Why well, do you have a ultra favorite number, 27, which is less than a million? So, I had to choose another one. So why is 43 quintillion and such and 3 million and such my favourite? Well, does this ring a bell? Well, 43 quintillion such and such is the number of ways you can scramble up a Rubik's Cube from any position. This is one of the 43 quintillion different possibilities. Now, how do you calculate this? Now, there's a common misconception, which is that you solve by the stickers. So basically, I don't know, maybe you'd solve something like this, and I don't know, like this, and like this, and like this. Now, this is a misconception for two reasons. For one, of, for one, this cube in particular doesn't have stickers. Well, apart from the sticker logo, but forget it. This is a stickerless cube. And even if the cube is not stickerless, well, it's still wrong because... So, the cube is actually made out of pieces, not individual stickers. So, this, say, is a white, green, and orange piece. This means these three colors can stay together. When you, like, put this on a cube, these, the, the, these will never separate. These three colors won't separate. So, you're not actually trying to solve stickers. No, you're trying to actually solve pieces. And this is where we can calculate the number of positions we can arrange these. So, there are actually two different types of pieces. Corner pieces and edge pieces. Corner piece, pieces like this one have three colors on them. See, this one has white, green, and red. This one is an edge piece because it has two colors, white and orange. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be separating the eight corner pieces apart from their 12 edge pieces. Alright, so we have the 8 corner pieces here and the 12 edge pieces here. So here's the core and the, these are the centers. Now the centers, they don't move. Because when you think about it, if you like twist this, this will actually never go. It'll just always stay here. So the centers, on they can't move. So let's take the edge pieces. Now how many edge pieces are there? Well there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So... Let's say, how many edge pieces, or how many ways can we insert edge pieces? So, we can take any one of these. So, any one of these 12 edge pieces, maybe we'll take this one, and insert it here. Now we'll take another edge piece. But this time, there's only 11 we can choose from. So, we have 12 for the first, and 11 for the, for the next. Next. Then we go to the next edge slot, but this time we only have 10 slots, well, 10 edges left. So we can take this one. And then we have 9, 10, then 8, oh my god, this cube does not like to be assembled. Okay, and, and so on, so you, you get the point. So, essentially, we have 12 corner slots for 12 edges. For the first one, we have 12, then 11, then 10, then 9, then 8, then 7, then 6, then 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, then 1. So, we have 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 5, times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, but we don't really care about that one. So... The number of ways to put these edges in is basically 12 times all the numbers going down to 1.
This is called 12 factorial for short. So, the number of ways to put these edge pieces in here is just 12 factorial. Now, we can do the same for the corners. Since there are 8 corner pieces, it, uh, it goes from 8 to 7 to 6 to 5 to, and so on. We can do this like 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 3 times 1. So this is 8 factorial. So just the number of ways to put the pieces in here is just 12 factorial times 8 factorial. But wait, there's more. So when I put my first edge here, you may realize that I can put it in... I can put it in two different orientations. I can either put it in like this, or I can put it in like this. Same for the next edge, for like for this one, I could put it in like this, or I could put it in like this. And we can basically do the same for every single edge. So, if we say that for every 12 factorial positions we have, we put these edges in, there's an extra two, there's like another combination for each individual edge to be flipped or not flipped. So, we can think about it like this. This edge has two possibilities, and then this edge has two possibilities, and then same for all the other edges. So, if there are 12 edges that we can just multiply 2 times 2 times 3, 12 times, and then this is denoted by 2 to the power of 12. So that's how you can like calculate the orientation. Now, obviously, we can do the same for the corners. We have eight corners, and we have three ways you can orient them. Now, the edges are not here, so it looks kind of weird. But this corner, you can put in like this, or like this, or like this. They have three orientations each. So three orientations to the power of eight corners. So there's our final sum. So, it's 12 factorial times 8 factorial times 2 to the power 12 times 3 to the power 8. But, that's not all. See, the problem is, although you can really actually put the pieces in... Here, I'll reassemble the cube and show you what I mean. Alright, oops. So, I have the cube assembled. Now, would I be able to solve this? No, this is actually an impossible case. Now, what do I mean by impossible case? Well, basically, there's parity errors. So basically, if you do certain things to a cube, you basically cannot solve it. I'm, I'm not even kidding. So basically, say if you twist one corner on the cube. Now, if you twist one corner of the cube, this is actually unsolvable. You actually cannot solve this if one of the corners is twisted. So to make it solvable again, obviously we twist the corner. Maybe not like that, maybe you can take it apart the cube, but that's for another time. So that's parity error one, but there's like two others. So there's another parity error in the edge flips. So if you flip one edge, you like take one edge and flip it, it's unsolvable. So. To fix this, we're going to have to take this out and flip it. There you go. Now it's fixed. Now, the last one is having two edges swapped. If you swap two edges, then this is also unsolvable. Now, some of you might be thinking, what about the corners? Well, if you, do, if you think about the corners, if you actually swap two edges... This is actually equivalent to swapping two corners on a cube because edges and corners basically have like kind of the same parity error type thing. If you swap two whatevers, it's not going to be possible. So what you have to do is you have to take these edges out. That was hard for some reason. And, and just put these back in. Now, of course, it's a solvable cube. So, as you may have guessed, 
we're going to have to do some modification to our sum. So remember when we were putting edges in one by one? Well, it actually doesn't really matter where we put the edges and what position. I'll get to the orientation part later. But it doesn't really matter where you put the edges in. Basically, when we get to the corners is where we kind of get... We have to be a little bit careful. So we can put in the first six corners wherever we like. But then the last two corners, they have to go in the right spot. If they don't go in the right spot, it's going to be... It's just not going to work out. So basically what we have to do is we can kind of like divide by two after this. So we basically have all the, all the combinations. And then we divide by two to compensate for the parity errors. To make the cube solvable, obviously. So now what about the orientation? Let's start off with twisting corners. The first seven corners can be twisted in any way, but the last corner has to be twisted the correct way. If it was twisted like this, or like this, oops, like this, it would not be solvable. So, since there are one, one, two, three ways to orient a corner, that means we're going to have to divide by three at the end. As you may have guessed, this applies the same for the edges. The, the first 11 edges, they can be in they can be anything they want but the last edge has to be oriented the correct way so there's that so what we can do is we'll get our calculator out and we'll divide by two two for the edge flips two for the permutation and three for the corner twists so that's 12 so what was it 12 factorial so I'll press this little x with an exclamation marks 12 factorial multiplied by 8 factorial Multiply by 2 to the power of 12. Oops, not 1.2. 12. <laughs> uh, that. Multiply by 3 to the power of 8. And now we divide all that by 12 to compensate for parities. So, if you look, we get... 4, 3, 2, 5, 2, and it has a little cheeky times 10 to the 19 at the end. So, if you compare this number to the original, it's actually pretty accurate. Because my calculator does not display all the digits, it doesn't seem convincing, but if I read the first few digits of the number, 43 quintillion, 252 quadrillion, 3 trillion, 274, but you can, you, I think you can trust this that this works. And 10 to the 19 does mean that this is quintillion or tens of quintillions, I should say. So yeah, that's, that's the number of permutations on a Rubik's Cube. So the more observant of you will realize, what about the 3 million figure? Well, that applies to the number of combinations on a 2x2 two two Rubik's Cube. So if you think about it, the 2x2 two two is pretty much the same as a 3x3. Three three. Well, it's basically just the corners. See, this is kind of similar, this is kind of similar, and this is kind of similar. So maybe we can just do the corner calculation, right? So, let's see, let's, let's try this. So what was it? 8 factorial for the the permutations of the pieces, 3 to the power 8 for the corner twists, uh, divide by 3 for the parity, and divide by 2 for the other parity. Oh, why do we get 44 million? That's way bigger than 3 million. Maybe I calculated the math wrong. WRONG! 3 million is actually correct, but it requires a little bit more thought. Let me explain. So I've got my regular 3x3 three three here again. So let's turn the right side up once and the left side up once. Does this look solved to you? No, obviously. So let's try that again with the 2x2. Two two. We turn the right side up and the left side up. What? It's solved. Well, why is that? Because on here, there are, there are corners. The corners are like in the right spot relative to each other. If you ignore all the edges and the centers, this cube is actually solved. So that's basically that's basically what's happening to the 2x2. Two two. We can just keep doing this and technically we could be making infinitely more combinations, but it's just still solved. So surely there must be a better way around this. 
So there are other methods to get, a, to get around this, but this is one that's my favorite. It's basically to ignore one corner piece and just never touch that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that in, in this location, the back, left, and down. And we can only turn these layers, these layers, and these layers. And what we notice is this layer affects these four pieces. This layer affects these other two, and this one affect, and then this one finally affects this piece. So what we're actually doing is we're actually effectively scrambling the pieces, but like it's like around this piece. And then this piece is not gonna appear soft. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm, I'm just gonna be turning those layers while just keeping this this yellow, blue, and red piece in its place. As you can see, I'm not doing anything to it. It's just, I'm just fixing it there. But does it look solved? No. So this is actually a perfectly valid solution. So basically what we, how we can think about this is we can just say that this corner, we, we, we can't move it. We, we just can't move it. It's fixed there. But we can do anything else on the 2x2. Two two. There's just one more thing I'd like to point out. So... So let so actually let actually let's do this calculation. So so it's not eight factorial anymore because this piece can't move. Remember, it's now one two three four five six seven factorial. So it's seven factorial, and then we gotta do the obvious. So multiply by not not three to the power eight because remember this one can't move. It's three to the power of seven. So now what do we do? We divide by the usual 2 and divide by 3. Alright, so yeah, dividing by 3 still occurs. And equals, we get 1 million. Why do we get 1 million? Well, let's see. So, remember how you can swap two pieces on the Rubik's Cube? That still applies to the tube too, right? No, it does, because when you... I can do an algorithm here, and these two corners are swapped. Now, you might be thinking, why does only two pieces swap happen on a 2x2, two two, but not on a 3x3? Three three? How does that work? Well, the truth is, when I do the same algorithm, you'll notice that only these two corners are swapped. But these two edges are also swapped. So you can't see the two edges. You can't actually see the two edges. That's why it looks like just two pieces have swapped because you can't see the edges. But on this, you can swap the... You can actually say the same thing if there was like an edge-only cube. You can actually swap just two edges, but you'll end up swapping some other pieces as well. So what this means is, is we didn't have to divide by two at all. We can just multiply that by two. And there you go. We get 3,674,160. Perfect. So those are my two favorite, well, mega favorite numbers, I should say. So if anyone wants me to do this for the 4x4, four four, if I get enough demand on this video, then I might make like a part two with the 4x4 four four and 5x5, five five, but be warned, the numbers are going to get humongous. So if anyone wants to leave in the comments, I might make like a part two of this, maybe even including some ob obscure puzzles like this and this. So thanks for watching and see you next time.